Welcome to Electron Line. In order to do well in an algebra class, you have to have a good foundation in arithmetic. And usually by the time we get to algebra, it may have been years since we've seen some of these arithmetic properties and calculations and, and exercises and problems. And we may have forgotten a lot of the terms and we may not remember quite how to do certain things. It's always a good idea to go back and review the things that we've learned years earlier. So if you want to be ready for algebra, I think a good arithmetic review is in order. And that's what these videos are going to be all about. I don't know yet how many there will be, but there will be a series of these videos where we will go systematically through all the various things that you need to know for in arithmetic in order to be ready to take algebra. We'll start out really easy with some very basic principles and we'll work ourselves through a lot of this arithmetic. So starting out with fractions and basic terminology. What is a fraction? Well, we write a fraction like this with two numbers and a line in between. This is 1 over 2 or 1 half. We can write it slanted like this or we can write it vertical like that. Same thing. This is always preferred. It's easier to see this and this. Or you can always think about it as 1 divided by 2. The number in the top is called the numerator. The number at the bottom is called the denominator. And if you want to get a visual representation of what a fraction is, Think of a circle, for example, and you're going to divide the circle in as many pieces as is equal to the number in the denominator. So if the denominator says it's 2, you take a circle and divide it by 2 pieces. If it's 3, you divide it by 3 pieces. The number at the top tells you how many of those pieces you have. In this case, you have one of the two pieces, so you have half, or 1 divided by 2, or 1 out of 2 pieces. And that's what a fraction really is. Now there's different kinds of fractions. There's what we call proper fractions. A proper fraction is a fraction that has a numerator that is smaller than the denominator. This is the symbolism that we use, n for numerator, d for denominator, and the numerator is smaller than or less than the denominator. You can see that in all cases, the number on top, the numerator, is smaller than the number on the denominator, which means all these numbers here, or all these fractions, are less than one. If the numerator is smaller than the denominator, the fraction has a value less than 1, meaning you don't have the whole circle, you have only a portion of the circle. They're called proper fractions. An improper fraction is where the number at the top, the numerator, is bigger than the denominator. 4 divided by 3, 9 divided by 7, 32 divided by 17, or said 4 thirds, 9 sevenths, 32 seventeenths. All these numbers, all these fractions, are bigger than 1. They're called improper fractions. Improper fractions can be turned into what we call mixed numbers. We can pull out the whole integer out of an improper fraction. For example, the number 4 thirds, which is this number right here, or this fraction right there. We can think of it as 3 thirds plus 1 third. 3 plus 1 is 4. But if we separate it like this, you can see that 3 thirds, if the number at the top and the bottom is the same, that is equal to 1. So this then becomes 1 plus a third, which is written as 1 and a third. We get rid of the plus. The plus is really still there, but we simply don't write it. So this is called a mixed number, and it's exactly the same as this number right here, this fraction, which is called an improper fraction. Same with the number 15 divided by 4, or 15 fourths. You can write as 12 fourths plus 3 fourths. Again, 12 plus 3 is 15. But notice that 12 can be divided by 4 just evenly. 4 goes into 12 exactly 3 times, so this can be written as 3 plus 3 fourths. And again, we can take the plus away and simply write as a mixed number 3 and 3 fourths, and that's how we say that. If we want to visually represent what an improper fraction is, notice 4 thirds can be written as 3 thirds plus 1 third. Here you have a circle that's divided into three parts, and we have all three of these parts. We have the whole thing, 3 divided by 3, plus here we have another circle that has three parts, but we only have one of those three parts that represents one-third. So 3 thirds plus one-third gives us four-thirds, or one and a third. So that's a visual representation of what a mixed number is. Basic terminology always helps to know what it is, and so now we can go forward in learning how to deal with fractions and many more operations after that. So that's our first start. If you like this kind of thing and you need some review of your arithmetic to be ready for algebra, stay tuned. We'll have lots of good videos for you that will help you do that.